it's one of the most capable espresso machines you can get your hands on. The Creme One Profiler combines the deep espresso heritage of Creme Expo Bar with absolutely, and no exaggeration here, amazing new capabilities. It's the flagship machine of Creme's One Line, and it has features beyond those in machines that cost a lot more. In fact, the price on this machine is right in line with current prosumer level dual boiler machines with rotary pumps and PID. Now, the Profiler is a reservoir only machine but that allows for extraction profiles with those very low pressures as part of the mix, like Slayer shots. Possibilities with a profiler go well beyond those of competing machines, and it's SGS approved for commercial use, while most competing machines are not. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Holate Love. Are you ready to take a journey? I sure am. Coming up, I'll go over the capabilities and show you what this machine can do. Touch on the origin backstory. Tell you how I approach profiling with tips for specific situations. Tell you how you can get three profiles I created on this machine. Show you what comes in the box and have some final thoughts. It's a long video because, well, this machine deserves it. So feel free to use the chapters down there to quickly get to points of interest. So there's a lot to like on this machine. Beyond repeatable extraction profiles, this machine can end a profile based on volume of water delivered, so it can act like an automatic machine if you want. You can set on and off times by day of the week. You've got a useful eco mode, which reduces boilers to a temperature you set to save power and programmable standby, which powers down the boilers completely. More on all of that coming up. At first glance, the Creme 1 Profiler resembles other E61 Group machines. In order to do those very low pressure pre-infusions, the profiler operates from reservoir only. You will see a connection for plumbing, but it is not used on this machine. It has a very deep feature set, but you can still use it just like any typical dual boiler PID machine. Load it up, lift the lever, pull your shot at 9 bar, and call it a day. Now, if that's all it did, it's still competitively priced compared to machines with standard capabilities and no profiling. But back to that journey. Again, you can use a profiler like a regular E61 machine. Then as your skills, knowledge, and desires expand, use its profiling to blow your taste buds away with Next Level Espresso. You really will be amazed at the difference profiling can make. The Creme 1 Profiler is a machine that's been a number of years in the making. We work closely with the Creme engineers and designers on development of the machine, continuing a relationship which started nearly two decades ago when we worked with them on the development of the much-loved Expo Bar Brutus. Here's some footage showing prototypes during our 2018 visit with the design team in Gandia, Spain. We've been testing the Profiler for months, are impressed with the results, and are proud to be the exclusive dealer for these machines in North America. And, oh, by the way, we offer Creme machines with an industry-leading three-year warranty. On the Profiler, you can run an extraction with continuously variable brew pressure. You can modify brew pressure manually during an extraction, save profiles you like and use them again, even export and import profiles to share with others. In a future video, I'll show you how you can set the machine up to run it up to 12 bar of pressure when doing a profile. Now, we're gonna set it up to run at nine bar out of the box, but if you wanna try what's becoming a trendy technique using a very high pressure to start a profile, the powerful variable speed DC motor can produce those high pressures and open up new extraction possibilities. We've been playing with that and the results are quite impressive, so do look for that video coming up. Whether you want to run a long, low-pressure pre-infusion on a lighter, fresh-from-roast single-origin coffee to tame brightness, or maybe hit a darker or older coffee hard off the top and ramp it down to reduce bitter or stale flavors, or maybe you want to go with moderate pressure and bump it up in the middle to bring out some sweetness, the possibilities are endless. Profiling really does allow you to craft the flavor of a coffee. Now, I've done lots of profiling on a variety of machines for more understanding of what you can accomplish. There's a link up here and then down in the description that covers the basics of profiling and includes five profile graphs for different coffees and extraction styles to get you started. 
The one profiler we're looking at in this video is the top of Krem's One lineup, which includes the One HX, the One Duo V, and the One Infuser with its gradual soft pre-infusion. If you'd like to learn more about those, use the links in the video description for individual videos on each of those machines. Later in this video, I'll run you through my process for using profiling on this machine. It's honestly really easy to do and produce excellent results if you know just a couple of simple things. So do stick around for that. But let's start with a look at the key components that make profiling possible on this machine. First is a powerful variable speed DC motor coupled to a rotary pump. The motor is whisper quiet. Really, it's quiet at a whole new level compared to AC motors. Just listen to this for a few seconds. The water dripping, that's yeah, really louder than the motor. And powerful, want to simulate a lever shot and bang a dark roast with high pressure out of the gate, then taper the flow as the shot progresses. Some espresso heads, me included, love the results of that technique with the right coffee. And this motor has the strength and precise variable speed control to get the job done. The second key component is a precision flow meter located in the cold water hydraulics before the motor. The third component is the pressure transducer located off the pump. The flow meter, variable speed pump, and transducer all in the cold water chain is a reliable setup that makes profiling accurate and repeatable. Something that's key to understand and open up to another possibility is how this machine uses the volume of water flow to control when pressure changes happen and not time. That means there's a measured volume of water associated with a saved profile. So when you run a profile, you'll see the brew water volume count down in the display. Then the machine regulates the pump speed to change brew pressure according to the profile. When it nears the end of a profile, the display shows the lever icon and you can stop it by lowering the lever. But do nothing and when it reaches the total volume, the extraction stops even if you do not lower the lever. And that's cool, an E61 machine that stops the pump automatically without using the lever. Now, you do need to bring that lever down eventually, but stopping the pump automatically, that's handy for both home and commercial use. Coming up, I'll take you through how I work a profile, but first the basic specs of the Krem 1 profiler. PID controls the temperature in both boilers, which are copper with brass end plates. And the boilers, they are big. The 1.7 liter steam boiler has a heat exchanger inside, which preheats water feeding the brew boiler. That's a unique and useful feature carried over from previous Krem designed Expo Bar dual boiler machines. And that brew boiler is about as large as they come at a massive 1.5 liters. That's double to more than triple the size of competing machines. Larger boilers and that heat exchanger brew water preheat mean more consistent temperatures, nearly instant recovery times, and the ability to pull rapid fire shots. The large surface of the drip tray is unique and great for both home and commercial use. Plus it has this trick with a removable platform for a scale where you're going to be able to get a little more clearance for taller cups up to four inches. Volume in the drip tray that's really big at 1.9 liters and that's good if you will not be running it to a drain line and you know maybe get a little lazy with the emptying. The profiler's drip tray is electrically monitored by these contacts so you'll get a warning in the display when it needs emptying. When the tray is full, brewing is locked out until emptied, so there's no chance of overflow. If you do run to drain line, the tray is pre-drilled and set up with a collection cup underneath and comes with a drain line. A rare feature I love is the ability to drain the brew boiler. You're not going to find this on most other machines. Open a valve underneath the machine and it drains into the drip tray. So it's a really good thing the tray has the capacity to handle the entire volume of the boiler. Moving up from the tray, check it out, a shop mirror. You'll find that on all the one machines. And these are, you know, really a lot of fun, especially if you do bottomless shots, you'll be able to see them develop without bending over. A dual pressure gauge gives you readouts on brew pressure to the left and steam boiler pressure to the right. Valves for steam and hot water are the half turn type, so less turning to go from full open to close. The steam wand is no burn, and this machine comes stocked with both two and three hole steam tips. With a drip tray's large deck, it's possible to create latte art quality froth somewhat automatically, meaning you 
do not have to hold the frothing pitcher if you don't want to. Just place this frothing pitcher, which comes with the machine, on the deck, and with a little trial and error between milk level and tip position, the milk can basically froth itself. As the froth expands with microfoam, it covers the tip, and milk continues heating. The machine comes with a dual narrow spout porta filter with an angled design for easier tamping, three filter baskets of 7, 14, and 18 gram capacities, and a blind filter for back flushing, brew pressure, and OPV adjustment. The E61 Group features Krem's exclusive pre infusion chamber located above the shower screen. It's a Another much loved legacy feature from Expo Bar machines, which slows down pressure and flow buildup, giving the coffee more time to swell prior to full flow. This helps reduce channeling and increase the depth of extractions. Max brew pressure is adjustable by turning the rotary pump's bypass adjustment underneath the machine. The OPV, which acts as a safety valve for the brew boiler on this machine, is adjustable behind the drip tray here. Before I get into profiling, a look at the functions of the OLED display and control panel. There are two menu systems, the barista menu and the service menu. In the barista menu are the most commonly accessed functions. In the password protected service menu, you'll find more basic settings, you know, things you will maybe set once and then very rarely ever change. Now, not going to go real deep into every function, I'll save that for another video, but highlight the basics and things you should know. When the machine is idle, you'll have a display of current boiler temps. An icon to the right of the temperatures indicates which boiler is currently heating. When pulling a shot, you'll get a shot timer in the display and a readout of the volume of water from the flow meter. Keep in mind that volume measurement includes water that wets the coffee and fills the exclusive pre-infusion chamber above the shower screen so it does not represent the amount of water delivered to your cup. You can set how long that information persists after an extraction in the barista menu. I like how the display has an upward facing angle. It mirrors the angle of the shot mirror and makes it a lot easier to view and use. The display is surrounded by four buttons. Pressing and holding the upper left button powers off the machine. Pressing again turns it back on. If eco mode is enabled, you can quickly turn that off or on by pressing the lower right button. When activated, this drops boiler temps to their setting in the service menu to save power. Pressing the upper right key takes you to the barista menu. From there, use the upper keys to navigate to functions like boiler temps, which display in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and you the, use those lower keys to adjust. A very nice feature is the ability to set on and off times for each day of the week so the machine is up to temperature, ready and waiting for you. If you'll be away, you can turn those off globally when needed. Now, as I mentioned, you can use this machine like a normal E61 and ignore the profiling. Or you can go a step further and use the soft pre-infusion feature, which ramps up to full brew pressure in a user preset time ranging from 0 to 30 seconds. But let's take a look at how to do profiling and how I approach it. Profiling is controlled by this knob. Now you can run a manual profile or choose from a preset. If you run a manual profile, you'll have the option to save it if desired to one of five available presets. Now, if you get the machine from us, it will come preloaded with three profiles I personally created. My profile for specialty coffees was developed using this single origin Ethiopian Yirgacheff from Berry House. I created my profile for dark roasts and blends using another Berry House coffee, their Arosto Scuro, and my sweet bump profile that works well with medium roasts and blends, which I made for one of my favorite classic Italian style blends, Maromas Orfea. Now you can try my profiles with the coffees I used or others with similar characteristics. In a second, I'll show you how to set up and use preset profiles or create and save your own. To run a manual profile, I just press the knob and then turn to set my starting pressure, lift the lever, and the pump will go to my starting pressure. From there, I can turn the knob to adjust pressure up and down at will. Notice in the display, you'll get a shot timer, current actual brew pressure, volume of water measured by the flow meter, and down below is my target pressure. 
When the manual profile is complete, you can push the upper right button to view a graph of the profile showing how pressure changed versus the volume of brew water delivered in centiliters. You can save a manual profile to one of the five profile presets and name it if desired using the knob to select and confirm characters. To run a save profile, just turn the knob to the one you want and push to select. If desired, you can press the upper right info button to see a graph of the profile and its target time. To start the shot, just lift the lever and the machine does the rest. As the shot progresses, you'll see a shot timer, current actual brew pressure, countdown of liquid volume in milliliters, and down below the target pressure. When the liquid volume remaining goes below five milliliters, the pull lever down icon appears in the display. If you do nothing, the pump will stop by itself when the volume countdown reaches zero. So let's say I'm working with a new coffee or you wanna run one of my profiles. How do you set up and approach profiling? Well, it's really quite easy. The first step in my process is to dial in the coffee for a normal extraction with no profiling. Using an 18 gram dose in the 18 gram basket, I dial in the grind size of the coffee to produce a one to two brew ratio of 36 grams in my cup, which extracts at about nine bar in 25 to 30 seconds. So at this point, I'm not using any of the profiling functions, just operating the machine as I would any other. Once I've got the standard extraction dialed in, I'll taste my espresso, then try one of my saved profiles. If using a fresher specialty coffee, like this Ethiopian Yerga Chef, I'd have a go with my light roast profile, which keeps the brew pressure very low for a while and then ramps up to moderate pressure. That profile allows a coffee to off gas prior to more substantial pressure, which does wonders to reduce the brightness one gets with lighter and fresh from roast specialty coffees, like those fruity high altitude single origins. If using a darker roast like this Berry House Orosto Oscuro or a coffee that's not exactly fresh, I'd probably go with my dark blend profile, which hits a coffee hard off the top and then reduces pressure in a few steps as the extraction progresses. That profile pulls out the good stuff while reducing bitter and stale flavors. The result is usually an espresso with good body that's sweeter, smoother, more rounded, you know, an enjoyable espresso. Of course, my profiles are just the start, so do check that link for the article covering the basics of profiling, including graphs of five basic profiles to get you started. In the box with a Creme 1 profile, you get the dual spout portafilter, seven 14 and 18 gram filter baskets, plus a blind filter, a real live usable tamper, that's a rare one, a two hole and three hole steam tip to fit your preference for frothing, also rare, a milk frothing pitcher a group brush, and Urnex back flushing tablets. Overall, a lot of extras you're not gonna get with other machines. So my final thoughts, the Creme 1 Profiler really can take you on a journey. Out of the box, use a profiler like a standard E61 machine if you want. Then, as your skills, knowledge, and desires expand, you can use its profiling capabilities that are gonna blow your mind and taste buds away with next level espresso. I guarantee you will be amazed at the difference profiling can make. The machine is rated for commercial use and priced right around what you'd pay for competing dual boiler machines with standard capabilities. You know, no profiling. And they're not gonna have any of the extras like the shot mirror, the huge brew boiler fed with preheated water from the heat exchanger and the service boiler, and deep technical control if you want it in the barista and service menus. That's the Creme 1 Profiler. It's available now from Whole Latte Love. As always, if you have questions, use those comments and I'll get you answers. I'm Mark. If you like this stuff, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.